The time has finally come to crown our 2023 Hyper Naked Sport Bike of the Year. In part one of our comparison test, the Aprilia Tuono V4 walked away with the win. But we wanted to see if that $20,000 Aprilia could match up against BMW's M1000R and Ducati's Street Fighter V4 SP2. Let's find out. Aprilia's Tuono V4 Factory is a multi-time Cycle World 10 Best winner, but can this longtime favorite hang with the latest high-powered competition? Like BMW's M1000R, which is the most powerful of this trio, pumping out a ridiculous 185 rear wheel horsepower. But is that enough to win it all? Not if Ducati's $38,000 Street Fighter V4 SB2 gets its way. It may not have topped the dyno charts, but can its class-leading electronics take it to victory? Hey, we're back here at the Cycle World offices after multiple days of testing, both on the street and the track. And I'm here with Bradley Adams, in-market editor of Cycle World. And we're gonna discuss the strengths and weaknesses of these three bikes that we just tested in the second part of this Hyper Naked comparison test. We spent an entire day on the track, we had a control tire. We used the Prelli Super Corsa SP tires on all three bikes. And we did a lot of laps out there. Well, I mean, first off, we survived 106 degrees out there, so I was happy about that. And, uh, you know, honestly, I was really surprised. I think one of my big takeaways is for how advanced these motorcycles are, how much horsepower they're making, how easy they were to ride. Let, let's jump right in. Let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the BMW on the track. What do you think that bike did really well at the track? Um, well, I think the BMW, uh, well, actually, if we're, if we're going to start with that bike, the first thing you got to say is that it's got the best chassis of the group. The amount of uh, feel and feedback that that bike has as you charge into the corner and at lean, it's just got way more feel than any other bike. So I think that is absolutely its, its strongest point. And at a track like Chuckwalla, I would say that we all agreed that the bike feels super light when you flick it into mm -hmm. the corners. I think the carbon wheels are contributing yeah. to that for sure. Yeah. Um, you have le less reciprocating mass up there and you can really feel it. What else did you think was really good about the BMW on the track? Uh, well, I think brakes are another really key area and probably about just as powerful as on the Ducati, much stronger than the Aprilia. They didn't overpower the chassis getting in, but then you still had great stopping power. And then what about the engine? What did you think of the engine? Um, <laughs> you're setting me up here because the engine is great up top, but anywhere outside of high RPM stuff, there are some serious weaknesses to, to that power plant. And I guess this, this helps as a transition and there's yeah. some weaknesses here on the bike. So yeah, it's got just a, a big flat spot right in the mid range. You actually, you experience that a lot on the track and it, it changes the way you have to ride the bike. When you're really trying to push, you realize that the BMW is a little bit more difficult to ride in those situations because you're having to make extra gear shifts. So there were a couple places where I would have liked to have rolled through them in third gear, but unfortunately I was having to make an extra downshift down into second. You're shifting more throughout the track just to keep the BMW in its happy place. The other thing, it's not just the physical work of doing that, but now with the bike in a different RPM range, now you're having to manage the throttle a little bit. So it's a little bit more physically and mentally demanding. Yeah, and I, I would add that that bike, had we been at a different racetrack that had a longer straightaways, maybe that engine works better there where you're really up in the RPM or you're utilizing that top end power that it has. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, this, uh, it might be a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison, but you know, last year we rode the M1000 RR out at Thunder Hill, which is a completely different track. And it was really uh, kind of the same situation where there was a couple sections out there where I was having to make extra downshifts. Any other things that you didn't like it on the track about the BMW? Um, the, the biggest thing I think is uh, the, the electronics um, and not, not so much in terms of the, the way they, they work while you're riding, it's just the interface, especially with the Ducati and, and even the Aprilia, all the information is, is so well displayed. You know exactly what your settings are for each of the you know, rider aids. Yeah, and you on know the BMW, if you're, it's all what your DTCs at, you know, what you've got your ABS set up, you've got, you know all that on the other bikes and on the BMW, it's kind of hidden in the background. So you're always unsure of yourself a little yeah. bit, not knowing. Let's move on to the Aprilia. Um, the Aprilia we've spent a lot of time with because it was in the first part of our comparison test and it ultimately won that comparison test to go up against these bikes. 
So now we finally had the opportunity to take the Aprilia to the racetrack. So what are the Aprilia strengths on the racetrack? Still going back to uh, the frame, um, I think the, the BMW chassis might overall be a little bit better, but on the Aprilia front end feel is just incredible. You can run that thing into the corner and you have so much feel at the front tire, it lets you charge into the corners quite a bit better. I don't think the chassis overall is as well balanced as the BMW. It would start to get a little bit of movement from the rear, but on the side of the tire and getting into the corner even, there's so much feel from that chassis. You just gotta give kudos to the Aprilia engineers who have developed that thing over the years. That bike being able to run you know, kind of similar lap times at a similar pace at the racetrack is credit to all the work that they've done over the years because it's still such a good platform. Another thing that I would add is that on the street, in the past, we talked about how aggressive the riding position is, but then we finally take the Aprilia to the track, the super aggressive, over the front, yeah. slope seat that gets you up over yeah. the tank. All of a sudden, the riding position makes sense. Yeah, like when you're in like charge mode. Right. When you're just cruising when, around the track, right. you still feel a little bit locked in place, but all of a sudden, you're, when you're actually attacking a corner, you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense now. So, And I think all of that is to say how close this is to the RSV4 that it was based on, right. right? This is a naked bike that clearly has those sport bike roots. Right. Another thing that we talked about on the Aprilia in general, when you get into the electronics and you start digging into it, you have two separate suites that you can go into. You have a road mode that you can go in and adjust just some road stuff or you have the track side. So at the track we could just put it in the track mode. We could customize multiple ride segment, modes, ride in, modes yeah, within, and customize in the them and then you can toggle back and forth yeah. between those. Yeah. We could set up some suspension settings in there, set up some different DTC strategies or whatever we were trying to accomplish. Yeah, I think still one of the most programmable bikes and again really speaks to its the the kind of race bike routes that are being pulled down into this into this platform even yeah so of course there's some things that we don't like about the aprilia first off it's still the heaviest steering bike we kind of felt that in in the last test but here especially going up against the super light handling handling bmw and ducati it's just noticeable amount more effort to go from upright to to lean or even from side to side. And I've experienced with this Aprilia in the, in the past that they just don't feel quite as balanced front to rear. A big thing for me when I was trying to do some lap times and I get into the corner and again, the front end feels so good. And without that balance, rear starts moving around. And I just felt like that was loading the rear tire and then it was hard for me to manage grip at the rear. So it was a little bit more work from like mid corner to corner exit. And I know we did some stuff with the setup and we got the bikes close, but it just feels like this bike, it's going to take a little bit more work to get that, that ideal setup. And you're still not going to get that balance, that front rear balance that you have on the BMW. And then, you know, another funny thing that's interesting when you make that transition from the street to the track are, are brakes. And, you know, in <laughs> our previous comparison test, the first part of this, we loved the Aprilia brakes. We thought that the Aprilia brakes were the best of the three bikes that we yeah. tested before. But then all of a sudden you, you bring in the BMW and you bring in the Ducati, which both bikes have more high-end brakes. And we're like, oh, the Aprilia brakes all, all of a sudden in this company yeah. aren't quite as awesome as we you know, thought yeah. in the last comparison. It was so. definitely noticeable when you're doing like fast laps. Uh, and I got on the Aprilia and I went same brake markers kind of that I've been using all day. But all of a sudden you're like, I started getting to the corner of the hill, I better start, you know, get, adding a little bit yeah. more pressure here. And I had to adjust essentially over the next couple laps because there's just not the same amount of power as what you have on the, uh, the BMW and the Ducati. So with that being said, let's, let's jump into the Ducati. We walked into this comparison test. Um, you went to the press launch mm -hmm. for the Ducati, a slightly different version of it. But I think it was shocking to get it on the racetrack. There were so many things about it that were positives. It was one of the best Ducatis I've enjoyed on a track in a long time. So let's jump into some of those because you got to start with the engine. It's unreal in so many different ways. And it's not that it just makes a ton of power, but it is such a linear power that it delivers. It just makes riding the bike on the track simple. Yeah, I think the best way to describe that engine is as flexible. Yeah. Because if you're low RPM, mid-range, top end, 
whatever it is, it's making power. The things I really like about that engine are the drive off the corners, the way it puts the power down. It's just like shooting you off of a corner. It's truly incredible sensation for that thing. I think it's a little bit the engine, it's the chassis, the mechanical grip that the bike has but low end power on the thing, just incredible. And it gives you some gear options, right? Yeah, like oh, that absolutely. right there, mm -hmm. like you were talking about on the Aprilia having to downshift more in some places. On the Ducati, if you wanted to carry third, you could carry third like around three quarters of the track oh, if you wanted. Yeah. And it's yeah. got enough bottom end and then transitions in, into the mid range enough that you're saving on shifting, it's pulling out plenty yep. hard, yep. and it makes riding it a lot less busy. Yep and it just doesn't stop making power. Like, it, you're just watching the revs climb and climb, and it's just still pulling. It's yeah. still, it's, it's a truly incredible power plant. Kudos to Ducati for, for bringing that thing to life. Yeah, yeah and then, yeah. you know, supporting that are the electronics. Mm -hmm. There's two things that I really noticed or that stood out uh, during our track test. The first is that the Street Fighter never actually stepped out on me. Similar electronic settings on all the bikes as we're riding, you know, but the Aprilia would step out, the BMW would step out, and the Ducati, with those electronics, it just managed the grip so well, and it allowed me to not have to focus so much on throttle. One lap, I'd actually pay attention to the dash, where they've got the, that track Evo display on, on the bike this year. They do a really good job. They've got, you know, each of your rider aid settings, and then when a system is activated, it, you know, highlights that. Right that rider aid and I'm like oh it's working like I could see the TC yeah. light on you know um, but you can't feel, you it, feel and it you can't it's it's so transparent yeah. yeah and the adjustability's amazing you're trying to get your engine brake strategy right for that particular track mm -hmm. or you're trying to get your TC right so that you feel like you're getting the drive without getting hampered but all that stuff just it seemed like it was working so excellent yeah yeah no it's nice the to be able to kind of take your mind off some of that stuff and, and be able to rely on the electronics. Little things like trying to do, grab a couple downshifts on the Aprilia when we were doing fast laps. And the Aprilia quick shifter, it's, there's, it's almost as if you have to let the revs fall a little bit. It doesn't like rapid downshifts and I like to miss a downshift, right? Because the, the quick shifter is just not letting me make that last downshift. Right. So um, you just don't experience that at all in the, on the Ducati. Ducati has taken their quick shifter strategy to a completely different level. It can make adjustments when you're making that one-two shift. It's yeah. the best quick shifter that we've yeah. experienced, I think. Yeah. I think we would both agree. And yeah. then you take that to a track when you're trying to hustle and you're doing stuff and you're like, man, this yeah. thing is, it, it just, you don't have to think yeah. about it. I think, I think riding this bike on the track, it, it always reminds me of the saying we always go back to, how, how can this get any better? You know, we would have said that a year or two right. ago, right? And you ride this bike and you're just like, oh my God, they made it better. <laughs> you know, whether it's the electronics, whether it's the engine, yeah. So. so another super important thing before we move on to a couple weaknesses on the Ducati is I was per personally shocked at how comfortable the ergonomics were on that yeah. bike. You know, you look at the bike and it is so aggressive looking. Yeah. Your thought process is I'm going to get on this bike and I'm going to be folded up like the Aprilia and I'm going to be in this attack position. And then you get on the Ducati and you're like, oh, this thing's comfortable. Yeah. Like you've got room to move around in the seat. Yeah. The rider triangle's really nice. The bar position's nice. You still feel like for a, a track day that you can be aggressive. It's amazing. Like yeah. I just didn't expect that at all. Yeah. Oh, I think and you're that's taller I, than me. Yeah. So. No, I think that's how I opened my story when I when I uh, did my first review on that bike. It's like the two things you know we need to know about that bike is it makes a claim 208 horsepower, and the seat is almost as thick as a Multistrada seat. Right. Right. It's just like it's got the performance and it's got some comfort to it, and turns out that that makes a little bit of a difference on the track even. So. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that on the street in a little bit, but let's talk about, were there, were there any weaknesses that the Ducati had when um, we were at Chuckwalla lapping? Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess we can, we can consider it a weakness. It's a little bit hard to get used to the, the chassis. It's definitely a different sensation. It's just the way that kind of front frame loads, like going into a corner as you're putting a load into it, you get a little bit of a movement from the front. I think one of the ways we ended up describing it is just more feel, you're getting a little bit more movement. It's not as consistent and planted as, say, the BMW. I would say the electronics and the engine, the benefits of those systems far outweighed any extra little sensations I was getting. So that's the track. Yep. We've got a whole nother portion. We we're able to go do a big street ride on these things. And uh, yeah, so we, we've done a couple street rides 
on, on these <laughs> yeah. bikes and how we've spent yeah. a lot of time on them, which yeah. is great because the reality is they're street bikes. Yeah, yeah. Since we have the most experience, we've ridden the Aprilia by far the most because it's the second shootout that we've done a street ride with. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the Aprilia again and just kind of recap what we like about the Aprilia on the street. A lot of the strengths from the track still carry over onto the street. On the Aprilia, the biggest thing being the frame. What Aprilia has done such a good job at is just balancing the rigidity of that chassis, that frame. It really adds to the like, overall bump compliance, I think, on the street. Uh, ironically, the brakes, they were a little bit more lackluster on the track, but that kind of smooth, progressive ramp up of power was actually enjoyable and nice on the street. It's actually a pretty easy bike to ride on the street. So there's some things that we come back to that we think are weaknesses about the Aprilia. And as much as we talk about how we like the front end feel of the bike mid corner and how planted it is, it is by far the heaviest steering bike of any of the bikes that we've tested in this whole naked bike yeah. comparison test. So you get that mid corner stability, but man, it can be worked on a really tight canyon yeah. road. That Aprilia is a lot of work to lean into a corner. And then we tried some suspension changes, trying to get that thing to a point where it was balanced in a way where we it felt a little bit more flickable, but there was almost nothing we could do to yeah. kind of override that trait. And then we get to the engine and it's like, the V4 and the Aprilia has been a favorite of ours for a long, long time. It's a fantastic engine. But man, Ducati has taken the V4 to a completely yeah. different level. Yeah. And when you're riding them back to back, all of a sudden, some of those flaws that the Aprilia does have become more pronounced. And yeah. one of the things that we've talked about is it's kind of got this mid-range lull that kind of then spikes out of there, and it doesn't have that progressive horsepower delivery and torque delivery that the Ducati does. Yeah, so. it's like right at like 5,000 RPM is where I really noticed it. It's like you'd accelerate out of a corner. You know, it's not very far to the next corner. You're still accelerating, and it gets to that 5,000 RPM area. Just when you start thinking to roll off, you'll roll into it and all of a sudden it'll lunge forward and then you're having to roll off the throttle so you get to that really spike and you're having to ride around that engine essentially, yeah. which is a little bit frustrating. Again, it's a little bit road specific and the type of road you're, you're riding on. Another thing that we've talked about <laughs> multiple times are the ergos. I know it's where like, you're going, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, we just yeah. said that they all of a sudden made a lot of sense for the racetrack, but man, when, when you're going from the Ducati or the BMW even onto the Aprilia, the, the ergos are so aggressive. And at the end of the day, we came down Tuna Canyon in Malibu and it's just all downhill, super tight braking. And you get to the bottom and you're like, I'm worn out. My yeah. wrists hurt. You yeah. know, it's just, it's well, you're tight. Just, you're so locked in place. You know, the way the, the seat ramps up toward the back, it's kind of pushing you up over the front of the bike. You're locked up against the tank, the shape of the seat doesn't really allow for much movement, I would say. So yeah, I mean, it was really interesting to get to ride these things on the track and the street. It's nice to see that there are some benefits to the rider triangle on the track, but I think it's important for, for everybody to, to realize that, hey, on the street, it's a pretty demanding rider triangle. Yeah. So now we're gonna move on to the BMW. The BMW, I think, really surprised us when we all rode it back to back with the other bikes because as a street bike, it's a really, really good bike, especially in terms of the chassis, which is one of the things that we loved on the track, but you get out on a, a tight canyon road and it feels flickable and light and you can feel those carbon wheels making the turning really easy, but the compliance of the frame and making the bike feel really good on the type of canyon roads that we were on. The best word there is just versatile. You know, it, it really doesn't matter the road conditions, you know, whether it's rain grooves on the freeway, whether it's, uh, you know, really bumpy, tight canyon road or, you know, very smooth road. That chassis just really works. It's just a really good frame in that bike. Another thing that we talked about with this bike on the street is the brakes. Worked really well on the track but there were some benefits to the setup on the street too. Yeah, was. for sure. I mean, first of all, let's, let's say that the brakes look cool. They're anodized blue, but <laughs> yeah. they're Japanese Nissans. They're not Brembo's, like pretty much everything else that we've been testing. So these brakes are fantastic. They have the power. I would say that they're in between the Ducati and the Aprilia as far as feel goes. I think they've got a little bit more lever travel, which I like. They're, they don't just bite super aggressive right yeah. away but they don't require as much lever travel as the Aprilia, but really predictable and yeah. you, you get a lot of feel from them. So um, I, I really liked that. 
another thing that we talked about was the suspension and we got in there and we finally found some settings that you know really worked on the street and were great. You can find a good setting on the BMW. It's not always as easy to access and as easy to customize as yeah. the other two bikes. Yeah. So that kind of transitions it almost into a weakness. Even though there's nothing wrong with the suspension, yeah. it's how you interact with it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, basically our experience, ultimately I think what, what we landed on is for the most part, I'd say 80% of our riding on the street their road mode is is great and works well the problem is you almost don't even know what all the settings are with that road mode they don't really even show you the settings for each of the systems and the suspensions you can build the right. race pros um, you can customize those and we were able to get a couple of race pro modes set up you know with suspension settings that we liked and gives you some of that control that you otherwise feel like you're missing the other thing the ergos are pretty comfortable on it it's not overly demanding but there are some things about that bike, the biggest one being the handlebar that they're using. And I know you've spent a decent amount of time commuting on that thing, just freeway stuff, and had some thoughts on that too, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's really noticeable when you're doing a, a long 100 plus mile commute and the ends of the bars vibrate at a frequency that not only were my fingers going numb from resting on the brake lever, but the bar in mirrors, the mirrors are mounted at the end of the bars, they are completely useless at that point because yeah. they're vibrating yeah. with the ends of the handlebars to the point that you, you can't see anything behind right. you. I mean, it's it's got a noticeable amount of vibration on that right. bar. Yeah, it's an interesting setup, that kind of flat, you know, long, low handlebar, add the vibrations to it, and that takes away a little bit from the overall comfort of that bike. The other thing I did want to mention too is that engine tune. So you go to roll on the throttle and it's just it's just almost dead. There's just really just no power there and it's not accelerating off the corner. So that engine tune definitely affects you not only on the track, but on the street too. Yeah, I mean, I, for sure it's really noticeable. Which brings us to the Ducati because on the street, that engine is freaking unbelievable. <laughs> it provides so much performance and yet it's so easy to ride. Yeah. And so our day on the street just confirmed that again. Yeah, we can save this discussion for another video, but I would argue one of the best engine motorcycling right now. It's yeah. just truly brilliant. All of that flexibility that pays off on the track, it pays dividends on the street as well. It just gives you so much freedom in terms of gear selection. Yeah. You know, you're not having to think about that quite as much. Tons of grunt, you know, coming off the corner, just in the, in the really tight stuff we were riding, you just roll it long, it like leaps off the corner. And you know, I noticed on some of the tight roads that we were on, on the Aprilia, I was having to use first mm. sometimes to overcome some of that bike's jump off the corner, whereas the Ducati, you don't need to use first ever. You know, yeah. you, you might even be in third in some of those same corners, yeah, easy, and it yeah. chugs out just with super smooth power delivery. Then you hit a straightaway and just open the throttle, and you're like, oh my god, this thing <laughs> is a rocket ship. So yeah. um, really fun. But also adding to that, just like on the track, the electronics are just absolutely top level. Yeah, that's just an example of the overall refinement of this bike. and. That quick shifter, it's got the track and street programming to it. It's so brilliant on it's, the street. It's, it's just as like, good as any I've ridden on the street. Oh, it's better than the, anything yeah, I've ridden on the street. There's yeah. no better quick shifter for a no. street bike. The thing to understand here is we're not just talking about the quick shifter, but it's really showcasing the electronics as a whole on this bike and how all of the, the rider aids that they've built into this package. So then going back to what you had talked about from the press launch that you did, once again, we've got a Ducati Street Fighter that you look at the side of it and you're like, oh my God, I don't know how that thing's gonna be to ride. And then you get on it, you could argue it's the most comfortable ergonomically. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely gonna argue that yeah. it is. It is the most comfortable. It is the bike that I wanted to be on when we had big miles in between, you know, stops or locations, you know? And when I was riding home and I've got a hundred mile ride ahead of me, I'm like, that's the bike I wanna be on. I can't believe just, that, yeah. that, that that bike is the Ducati. I like, I just, yeah. in, in the past, we've always, we've never quite had that from Ducati. And yeah. man, they nailed it. The seat's great. Yeah. The bar position's great. The the rider triangle to your legs yeah. is really comfortable. Yeah. I, I mean, they really nailed it. It's, yeah. it's a great street bike. It really is. Yeah, it, it sounds funny, but again, that seat, it's thicker than any other seat. I think we've ridden in any of these naked bike tests. 
and the cushion is so much better on it. It really is an enjoyable bike to spend a long amount of time on. So let's let's talk about the weaknesses about the Ducati on the street. Are there any? What do we think about that? I because mean, it's a hard bike to find weaknesses on. Again, that chassis design, I think we experienced it on the track and maybe even more so on the street with rougher, torn up asphalt. You get so much feel. It's not quite as compliant, you know, mid corner and some of the rough stuff. Another thing that, you know, we have to bring up the Ducati arguably is the leader in electronics in this threesome and yet it doesn't have cruise control. Yeah. It seems, I mean, yeah. you, you don't know you need cruise control <laughs> until you've had cruise control, right, but right. when you're on the BMW and you're, the handlebar is vibrating a little bit and you can set the cruise control and give your hand a little bit of a break, it's nice. I don't know how many people are, are gonna be doing long distances on this, but yeah. to just be able to put it on cruise control for a mile or so and give yourself a little yeah. bit of a break is refreshing sometimes. Yeah. And, with the, all the other electronics they have, they have the ability to do that. They have it on the Multistrada, they have it on other bikes. Yep. It's like, it would, it would have been a, a nice thing to just yep. put on this because it's kind of a no-brainer. A little bit of a silly omission. The dash, there is a lot of uh, strengths to that dash and, and being able to adjust the electronics. The screen is a little bit smaller than the BMWs and it can feel a little bit busy. Outside of kind of nitpicking at it, it doesn't really have too many weaknesses on the street right. didn't really have too many weaknesses on the track it's it's i think really surprised us it's a pretty incredible package a combination of style performance and comfort so one of the things that we were tasked with answering in this comparison test was can the twenty thousand dollar aprilia come in and compete against these more expensive bikes from bmw and ducati and i think ultimately the answer is no what do you think about that? How did the Aprilia hold its own? I was actually pretty surprised by that extra level of refinement of those bikes. There was a noticeable step between the Aprilia and the BMW and Ducati. And I think a lot of people can, can really relate to is kind of comparing it to like an iPhone. You look at a two or three generation old iPhone, still gets the job done. There's plenty of people that are happy to have that. It's gonna be everything that they need, right? But there is that latest generation phone. And to me, that's what the BMW and Ducati are. They are that latest generation. There is that extra level of refinement. And they are, at this point, the best of the best. I think there is still one that's a little bit better. In my opinion, that's the Ducati. I think you've got some kind of final thoughts on that too. The BMW performed really excellent, but the one thing that held it back was the engine. I mean, we've already talked about the fact that we love the chassis, and there's so many things that we like about that motorcycle, but the engine ultimately just couldn't live up to the, yep. the performance of the Ducati, and it really boils down to that. I think everybody agreed that the Ducati was our favorite bike at the track, had the best performance, it had great electronics, the suspension was great, and then we go on the street, and not only did it bring those other things with it, it was the bike that everybody wanted to ride home, which is yeah. interesting. It has the most comfortable ergonomics. It performed really well on the street. Just basically blew the socks off of us in both settings. So ultimately, it's overall balance, it's overall performance. It is hands down the best Hyper Naked of 2023. I absolutely agree. Yep, it's fun, it's comfortable, and it's got all the performance you could ever, ever really need. And there you have it. The winner of our 2023 Hyper Naked Sport Bike Comparison is Ducati's Street Fighter V4 SP2. For the full story, go over to cycleworld.com for more information, facts, and figures. And as always, if you like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.